The Crit Show contains elements of horror, fantasy violence, and adult language. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. So years ago at a convention, we had seen this and we have talked about cosplaying it since. But did you see on Discord someone mentioned uh, that the demo for a game called Tactical Breach Wizards just came out? I did see that mention in our Discord. Yeah. <laughs> I scrolled by it and I guess didn't read it very clearly because I thought it said Tactical Beach Wizards. <laughs> I was more interested in that I think version. that cosplay. That comes second. Yeah. We do the Tactical the Breach Wizards and then we do the Tactical Beach Wizards. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dead or alive volleyball game. <laughs> <laughs> One of those characters is almost exactly what we saw at that convention. I didn't I haven't actually looked at them. So they have art of the characters? Yes. Yes. You Ooh. can play the demo. Oh. And it's like can, can you give me a refresh of what this cosplay was? Because I'm sure you said it before, but I just tune you out when you talk. It's like, That's fair. It's like contemporary special forces ass wizards. Yeah. So like wizards that are in like camo BDUs and have like a staff instead of a gun or whatever, or like a wand instead of a gun. You okay? My ear things just came off of my <laughs> <laughs> I tried to read What? what? <laughs> Your ear things? Yeah. The, the fucking, the, the, co- the rubber covers. Some of his glasses <laughs> just stayed behind. <laughs> I don't know what, okay, this is what the intro is now. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know what the fuck's wrong with your glasses. I I saw you take off your headphones and pull those from behind your ears, and I thought they were like giant cricket legs. Like, I was like, what the fuck is coming off of your head? He sheds every six months. Don't judge him. Oh, my God. The A pit formed in my stomach <laughs> before I understood what that was. Yeah, How tight are your headphones? No, it's just that my, <laughs> my glasses are designed for these to come off because they have different colors. Like a lizard. Oh. So if you want if you want to interchange them. Attacked. His glasses got scared. <laughs> <laughs> if Rev gets mugged, he drops his glasses arms like a tail <laughs> to confuse them. Hey, it fucking worked. Yeah. I'm very confused. I, yeah, you all panicked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! What the, were we talking about? The, ga- the game, <laughs> this the game. game, the wizards. So one of the things that I saw was like one of the characters is the something something the seer, and so they can see through any obstacle. Oh, and then the other person is the uh, necromantic medic, so they can heal you, but you have to be fully dead. And so there's oh. a, there's a thing where like someone is super injured and they walk over and like stab them so they fully die and then they heal them. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yeah, I feel like when we've talked about it, we've done like every school of magic, yeah. right? Like yeah. each school of magic would be one of the different types of wizards. Yeah, but it's very cool. They they have very different designs. There's at least four characters it shows in in the trailer for it. Yeah, that's I'm I'm so in on that. Um, though to go back to the beach subject mm. for another yes. cosplay idea, uh, I can't believe I haven't streamed this yet. But this would be great both to stream and to do for cosplay. Is uh, hooked on you, the Dead by Daylight dating sim. <laughs> yeah, yes. That it's all beach related, and they've even put some of the like the beach outfits for some of the killers and such <laughs> into the main game so you can run around in their beach garb. I'm looking up the Dead by Daylight killer beach outfits right now. Yeah, they're they're pretty great. Well, I am uh that's uh I got I got nothing to add. I'm kind of brain dead today. Yesterday <laughs> was a very long day. It was awesome, but it was a long day. We recorded all of the events yesterday for the Gen Con live show. And it How'd went, that go? It went really well. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I, I. The great part is I, I am doing like the Alex Horn role, and so I had to, I, I came up with all of the events, and I filled the room with stuff, and I'm just so happy that none of the stuff I expected to get used got used. Everything that I thought was just kind of a throwaway item got used. <laughs> I just love that you can't, you know, at, at one point, um, 
I think it might have been maybe Megan had asked me about like, oh, well, you know, our clothing, is it going to get dirty? And I was like, I can't begin to guess what you're going to do. <laughs> like, you, only you can answer that question for you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm excited for folks to uh, come to the live show and see all this, to see the, the food crime I committed and a few oh, other God. things. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't tell me. I, I don't want to know. I yeah. won't. Yeah, I, I stayed the whole day. I want to know. So that I, like, I could help facilitate the actual day of the shoot because the production company that I work for in, in the daytime hours, yeah. <laughs> as opposed to this, my secret nighttime job, yeah. uh, they were kind enough to donate their uh, time and resources to film for us. Yeah. Um, and so I took on my usual role of facilitating the shoot and making sure things are reset in between tasks. And I'm going to be editing the video. So I got to see what everyone did, but I'm, I'm trying to keep it under wraps as yeah. much as possible. <laughs> Kim, is this from Breach Wizards? It is indeed, yes. She posted a, a screenshot of Ooh. a couple of the characters. Oh, and yeah, it's instantly got like Kim and Megan vibes. <laughs> yeah, this could be like an alternate Mystery Detectives cover. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. All right, well let's add that to <laughs> right after borrow. Run out of days. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I'm also about to post a picture of what Jake should do. I, I suspect I know what this is. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just showed him one and he nodded. <laughs> I hope it. It's. Yeah. I think it would, yes. would require me to shave my head, which I don't necessarily want to do. Oh, and also put on about 140 pounds of pure muscle. <laughs> I think that people would get it. Because, I mean, he's not, he doesn't look like that in the game. That yoked? Yeah. Right. But which you, one's that? You are yoked in general. <laughs> no. He's wearing, like, uh, the tank top that me and Tass have. It's as, true. As a full, full body bathing suit. Yeah. Your, it's, a, your, it's a look. Your bathing costume. I think we should bring back bathing costumes. All right, well, uh, that's just, that's one of our days then. So now we've got all of our days accounted for at Gen Con. Everybody, so everybody, get to work, Google your bathing costumes, yeah. and let's reconvene in so, August. So Tass right. has got to stream this game because we need to see the characters. Yeah. All right, terrible news, everyone. We're going to not run any games at Gen Con because we're going to have a way too much time necessary to walk around in all of the different costumes <laughs> and enter into the contests and all that stuff, so... Yeah. Jake did just talk the other day about the idea of like uh, Dragon Con, all these costumes that we want to do that we don't do, and just go to the wild convention. Yep, we just need to pick one of those like group rowdy group themes and yeah, and go somewhere that will not just allow it but encourage. Oh it. yeah, <laughs> that sounds so good. Oh, what's the what's the convention that has you know everybody's in pool? Where Matsuri Con? Oh okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, that'd be the good or no one for the... Colossal Con. Oh, Colossal Con. Colossal yes. Con. Yeah. I want to go to the Bunny Hutch party at Dragon Con. Yeah. Yeah. God, there's uh, so many, so many good takes on characters at the Bunny party it's just, at Dragon Con. It, it's my all favorite. I've thing. ever wanted. Yeah. All I've ever wanted is to make like like a genuine like steel boned Playboy Bunny corset, and so this would be a, an excellent excuse to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay, perfect. Let's expand the list. So now we've got everything for every day at Gen Con. Plus, we need to come up with Dragon Con, and we need to come up with Colossal. Yeah, Con. it can't possibly be this <laughs> Dragon Con because that's too soon. Okay, next we'll roll it over. I think to we've next. already missed like getting hotels and stuff for this Dragon Con. <laughs> we just don't sleep. We just yeah. we just go and we party the entire time. Oh, like and still so just get dressed in the car and then go back out. I can't, I can't do that. I, gotta, <laughs> I at least have to have a place to fall over that's not in a hallway. Yeah. <laughs> what is this intro, you guys? I don't know. I think there's how no do, episode. We just talk. We, we're just hanging out. Yeah. How How do we end? I. Uh, <laughs> how do we break it to people that we're going to stop doing actual play and we're just going to go back to cosplay? Back to, this is our audio only cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> Where we just describe That's the Patreon the con do. content. If you want to see <laughs> the visual of what we put, <laughs> describe, it's been a it's been a hell of a week. That's what this intro is. We're all a little we're all a little slap happy already, and the day's <laughs> just begun. Well, let's get into the episode. Yep. <laughs> Jake, you are in the Amazon, standing at the edge of a launch pad, having tricked. This other version of you into coming here and in trying to push deeper 
into who or what they are, what's going on with them. You try to take a moment to inspect them closer after they enter this kind of fugue state and the idea that it is something out of their control, it is a magical defense mechanism, hits you like a bolt of lightning, and then the actual bolt of lightning <laughs> hits you. Uh, you take three points of damage from this. What did the lightning armor do for me? That's a very good question. You actually take one point of damage. Two of those are absorbed into the backpack that Grandpa Tincher gave you, and you can feel it on your back thrumming with power now. I love the visual of this little this monkey wearing the backpack <laughs> like a Ghostbuster. Um, and I think in the distance, you hear the sound of Detective Early's vehicle fire up. Well, on the plus side, that failure leveled me up. Oh, what are you going to take? I'm going to erase one used luck mark from my playbook. Okay. Because I was, I was really on the razor's edge there. I had one left. So <laughs> I'm going to give myself a little bit of breathing room. Okay. I'm going to try and kite him to the nearest of those trap circles that I had set up. Yeah, I mean, those are really yours to invoke. So I don't even think there's any kiting necessary. I think there can be one at the edge of the launch pad. Okay, then I'll spend one of those hold to activate it. All right, we'll use magic. 12. All right, what is your effect? Uh, trap him. This field springs up around him, and he begins to hammer at it, um, but there is no effect on the barrier. After a couple of moments, you hear the car start to move forward and then stop and footsteps behind you. I wasn't quite sure if you needed help. Did you just get struck by a bolt of lightning? I did, but the backpack took most of the heat off. You all right? It doesn't seem like it's going all that well. And he indicates that the Jake inside the cage just hammering at the walls. No, things went a little bit sideways when I introduced the idea that he's a time remnant. Oh. Which leads me to believe I might be on the right track. All right. So um, what are you going to do with him now? How does your um, like stopping magic thing work? So there's a couple different ways I can do it. Um, just being too close to, to real minor stuff gets it to kind of short circuit a bit. I can focus on things, draw the power from them. Okay, I can do something similar. Can we like hold hands? Can you give me a boost? I'm going to try and stop whatever's coming over him that causes this. Oh, sure, sure. I see. Uh, so it's some kind of a, a magical effect. It seems to be taking him over. It's like a defense mechanism. It just springs up when he's confronted with certain information. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, sure. You want to you wanna give it a try? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn back into me uh, instead of a monkey. He sees this inside of the cage, and his other fist starts to crackle with lightning as well. And he's just hitting fist hammer, fist hammer. I'm gonna close my eyes, take a deep breath in through my nose, and breathe out through my mouth. And I'm gonna try to use force of will. All right, and you get a plus two from his aid. Oh, nice! That is an eight. So on a mixed success, uh, momentary magics are canceled completely, long-lasting spells and effects are suspended temporarily, and I will take one harm as the strain of dismissing magic unravels me. Okay. So yeah, mark a point of harm. And so this will be dispersed temporarily. And so I think what instinctively you know that means is that the, hey, you might be a time variant trigger is gone from him. But if he comes to and sees you, it might start a new, if that makes sense, so that it's a, it is the event that causes it. So I think you have removed that event. Okay. Then, yeah, I want to I want to suppress this effect and just as deftly as possible, throw the mask back on. <laughs> you throw the mask back on and transform back into the monkey and you see his eyes clear inside of the cage. Did I get it? Did you get what? There was like a weird scorpion thing coming up behind you. What do you remember immediately before that? Seeing your your buddy like racing over this direction, because I think he must have seen it too. So he started his car and drove over here. Buddy, it happened again. That wasn't real. Wait, what do you mean? You lashed out at me because of the last thing I said. What'd you say? I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen again here, but that you might be something like a time remnant. Oh, and I reacted violently to that? There's something afflicting you. Some kind of magic, something that I think is, I'm not sure it's external. I think it might be somewhere deep inside of you that triggers when you're confronted with that kind of information. Whoa, like that kind of information, like, are you like, I'm not, that I'm not real? 
You're real, but you're not the original. Oh, oh no. What do I do about that? I'm not sure, and I, I want to figure that out with you. Okay, I'm sorry. I never got your name, monkey. I want to tell you. I don't, I don't want to conceal things from you, and I don't want to be dishonest with you. Yeah. But I'm afraid if I do, it might set this off again. What? Well, is your name Jake? Do I think, like, the fact that he can introduce that so casually, do I think if I say yes, like, it's going to flip him? Or is it, like, because he introduced this, it's okay? Why don't you roll just a straight sharp? All right. Uh, oh, 10. It seems like when the idea is introduced to him as an external thought, it's a problem. If he gets there on his own, it is not. Okay. And I think from behind you, Detective Early is like, Oi, nice to meet you. I'm uh, Detective Patty Early. Oh, I'm just here to, to help him out. I'm Jake. Nice to meet you, I guess. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry for not making proper introductions. I'm notoriously bad about that. Yes, I am also Jake. Like just your name or, oh, God, is there like a whole just slew of Jake's? Am I time remnant Jake? And you're like animal Jake and there's a, a mecha Jake out there somewhere. Is there just like a, a convergence of Jake's on this planet for some reason? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, there is a, a what seems to be an omniverse out there. So theoretically, anything is possible. But if that weren't the case, yeah, how else might a Jake be a monkey? A witch's curse? Uh, you come from the planet of the apes? Yeah. Um. What kind of stuff can Rev do? Magic. Yeah. So along the lines of a witch's curse, is there anything without such a sinister connotation? A wizard's blessing. More or less. Okay. Well, that's nice. So kind of like, like you're like an anamorph, but without the, like being trapped that way forever and being lost in the, in the woods. Yeah. That is, in fact, I mean, it's not permanent. Oh. So you can just be a monkey sometimes. Correct. That's got to be awesome. Yeah. And then sometimes I can be... A Jake. I will turn back. Huh. That's a hell of a thing. Oh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm just like beaming. Like, I've got, I've got the hang of this. Yeah. This is working. I can do this. Okay. I've cracked part of this. As long as a concept isn't foisted upon you, it's not triggering whatever this is. Uh-huh. If you come to the conclusion yourself, if you introduce the idea on your own, you're safe. Okay. I mean, that's like a lot of things in life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you tell somebody a thing and they're like, no. But if you come to it on your own, you're like, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Huh. So, I, I apologize if it seems like I'm talking down to you at any point. Oh, okay. But I may try to lead you some places so that you don't lose yourself in the process. Okay, don't. Make it obvious, because now you told me that you're trying to lead me there, and I don't know if that means that, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, think of it more like, I don't know the answers, right? Like, sure. I need to, I, with our two brains combined, yeah. well, actually, it's probably just a net zero, huh? Because we have the same, basically the same brain. This is like a, a thought experiment. Yeah. Our, our, our two, it's like a horsepower thing. Like, are our two brains greater than the sum of their parts? Oh. You know, are we like two horses who can pull eight horses worth of weight? Uh-huh. Or are we just two idiots who have two idiot brains that do idiot things together? Do you have a monkey brain? Uh, I think when I'm a monkey, huh. maybe technically. Do you feel different? When I'm a monkey? Yeah. I'm shorter. Oh, but not like you don't feel different like mm, bananas? Uh, No, I'm always like mm, bananas. <laughs> uh, No, I mean, uh, physically, yeah, like... I, I don't lose any of my mental faculties, okay. though, I don't think. Okay. If I do, th I haven't noticed yet. Hmm. But that could absolutely just be a symptom of turning into a monkey. <laughs> I wish this was a moment where I could do a super cut of just <laughs> instances <laughs> where you have turned into a monkey and everyone else watching you do things that you don't, <laughs> that you think are as a, like, <laughs> su su super clever or you're just not aware you're doing them. What the fuck is he doing? <laughs> well, he appears to be pooping into his hand. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go mar one of the runes, deactivate this trap circle. Okay. Yeah, he holsters his hammer and, and steps out of it and sits down on the edge of the launch pad. So, I've had one other encounter with, like, other Mies. Mm -hmm. That one was extra weird. It was a clones thing. And when when we made physical contact, c clones kind of got, like, sucked into each other and morphed into, like, a horrible monstrosity. But again, I, I don't think that's what's going on here. Yeah, because I, oh God, I wish I'd known that before I pet you. Oh right, yeah. Okay, so we're well. We're 
I was a monkey then, though. I don't, oh, that's true. I don't know if that makes a difference. Sort of like different DNA. Yeah, he scoots over a bit, like away from you. I do, yeah, the opposite direction. In unison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Detective Early notices. I think now this is a matter of, I don't know. I mean, you, you don't seem to be able to remember any of the turns. How far back do you remember? Do you remember our childhood? Yeah. So it's not like, you know, we can trace back how far your memories go and have an idea of when or how this happened. I think we might need to like head back to the lair and just do some, run some tests for lack of a better word. I think we need to get you back where you belong or when you belong. Uh huh. Again, I, d- I don't know. We need to determine what exactly the deal is. Okay. You up for that? Uh, yeah, I suppose. I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe we start running tests and we determine that I'm the one out of time or place and I need to go back. Oh, is this like a Ben Riley thing? It could be. Are we going to spend years thinking that you're actually Peter Parker and then it turns out, no, just kidding, I'm Peter Parker? I doubt it because I doubt that this ends with us in the same time stream or whatever or dimension. You oh, know? okay. Okay. Probably we won't have to be confronted with that eight years down the road. Okay. You can teleport, right? Yeah. Could you take us back to the lair so we can get started? Yeah. I, I can't take this guy's car. Is that okay? Detective Early, how attached are you to that car? Oh, I I can send it back on its own, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, or you, or you can just drive it back through the bridges and reconvene with us separately. Yeah, that was a whole ordeal, getting inside your wards and stuff before. I'll just come with you. And he reaches inside and he pulls down the air freshener and the whole car fills with that foam and then folds in on itself. Oh, okay. As he does that, you feel the ground start to rumble a bit. Do you guys feel that? Yeah. Is that you? It's not me. Is it me? It's not me. What can I glean of this rumble? Is it like an earthquake or is it like a uh, directional? Like, is there a creature burrowing? Yeah. Why don't you roll read a bad situation? Okay. Eight. You get a hold one. What's the biggest threat? Detective Early had driven in from the north uh, and this is coming in from the east. And I think that you realize that the east is the closest direction to the ocean and you can see the earth bubbling a bit as something burrows underneath, and it looks familiar. You have seen this pattern before with the earth rolling. It is a Draugr. That's a Draugr. We gotta go now. Uh, what? Okay. Jake, I'm gonna have you roll his teleport. Okay. With my existing stats? Um, yeah, because I think your weird might even be better than... Probably, yeah. yeah. Eleven. His hammer starts to glow, and as the three of you start to vanish from this place, you see the blue skin of one of the Draugr emerge from the earth. It opens its mouth, and a spray of rats fly in your direction. And as you vanish, you can see it smiling. You appear inside of Rev's old loft. The family having dinner... <laughs> Is very surprised. Huh? Wait. Wha? Huh? Oh, sorry. Um, he. You might recognize him from TV. I'm his twin brother. We. So we're in the wrong place. We'll go. I'm just trying to get all of us out the door. Yeah. And uh, one of the one of the partners turns to the other one like, "I told you those were scorch marks on the ground. That was like some kind of circle. They just came up like the devil." <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's why we got this place so cheap. But you get down the stairs and out into the street. Um. Yeah. So you are. At Rev's old place by the old Steak and Shake. So you're not far from the lair, but it's clear that this Jake doesn't know the lair. You're probably four or five miles away. When's the last time you visited Rev there? Where? Where we just left? Yeah. Gosh, I don't know. Before he moved, so maybe two months ago? Does that jive with what I know? Like with my timeline? Uh, What do you mean? I'm curious if, if he's from a different dimension or a different timeline... Did Rev live here longer than I expect? Like, did he move out earlier in my timeline than he did in this, Jake? I see, I see. You've definitely been in the underground lair longer than two months. And the way that he said Rev moved, it wasn't like to a new location, but like moved away. Okay, we're honing in on a timeline here. I wonder if there was one one key event that split our paths. Because for me, Rev hasn't lived there for a long time. Oh. Did he move to Ireland, too, in your world? No. With Siobhan? No, but I think he went there to 
maybe pick up on some of her research and and take over the training she was doing for some folks? Okay. All right. So not not everything's so different. Well, we're just a few miles away. Let's get moving. All right. Yeah. So we jump ahead to the three of you outside of the entrance to the subterranean lair. And as you and Detective Early pass into the wards, the other Jake is stopped. What's this? I don't know. If you're me, then these should allow you through. He places both hands just in the air and and pushes and it doesn't give. Okay, more puzzle pieces. There's there's something in these runes that stops you and not me. Is it time related? Is it dimension related? Jake, I think this is a different situation now. Um, Why don't you roll investigate a mystery? Okay, eight. Okay, you get a hold one. What's being concealed here? So as this other Jake pushes against the wall, you know the types of things that these barriers are meant to keep out. It's meant to keep you and the other hunters safe from any manner of a supernatural entity. And it's subtle. But as he is pushing against this barrier, you see the hammer shiver a little bit, almost grimace. You don't see Jake do it, but you see the hammer do it. Oh, I think I know what this is. What? I'll step back out outside of the wards. You just showing off now? Yeah, I just go back and forth between them, <laughs> make a neener, neener sound. <laughs> May I see the hammer? Sure. He hands it to you, and the leather straps on it flail out and start to wrap around your wrist. Similar to when he, like, winter soldiered, I know that this is going to happen. Yeah. But my focus is on him. Uh-huh. How is he responding to this? Why don't you investigate a mystery but I think to do this, you're going to take a point of harm as this starts to contract on your wrist. Yeah, I think I'm willing to make that trade. Okay. Would it be armor defeating? Not at the moment. Okay. Then even better. I'll, I'll be okay. Okay. That is a nine. All right. You get to hold one. I think again, like what is being concealed here? First, before I, I answer your question, because I don't want to give you a answer that is not beneficial and not feeding off of what you as the character already know, what do you think is going on? This is a doppelganger and a mimic. Okay. And the hammer is the mimic, and somehow the doppelganger doesn't know it's a doppelganger anymore. Correct. So the thing that is being concealed here is that there is some kind of permanent magic spell on the doppelganger so that it could become you when you were gone. This is a deep plant. And the idea that you have is that there is some kind of a trigger that can push him into the next phase, whatever that next phase is. And surely that trigger is possessed by Nash. But you imagine that it's probably also possessed by the mimic. All right. Well, first things first, then I got to get this mimic off of me. I'm afraid that like if I just heard it, that that, that might trip the doppelganger. Mm. Do I have any idea of like what's my best way to proceed in this situation? Yeah, why don't you roll read a bad situation? And I think you do take another point of damage. This one now is armor defeating as you feel the leather straps like starting to dig into your skin. Who, seven. All right, you get to hold one. I feel like a few of these have kind of the right implications. Mm -hmm. Uh, The one that I think is closest is like, what's my best way out? Out of curiosity, what are the other questions that you were thinking about asking maybe a best way to protect the victims or a dangers i haven't noticed and you know all of these sort of towards the end of like what move might i make here that would make things worse i see i see so so really you're trying to figure out how to deal with the mimic in a way that doesn't trigger the doppelganger yeah that doesn't kind of tip the next domino you know like if it's got a a set of commands that once it ingratiates itself then phase two will come in I'm also afraid of phase two coming in early if it's clear that the plan's not working. I'm afraid of triggering the thing that is already in him yeah. by hurting the mimic instead of just introducing the idea that he's not real. Like I'm just trying to, to take the next step and make sure it's not one that sets us on a path towards destruction. Okay. I think there is something that bubbles up in your memory. The night around a campfire... You and Tass and TJ having just freed a bunch of people from a dungeon. And once it was revealed that there was this set of creatures hiding amongst you, there was a very particular smell to each of them. And that smell wasn't present 
when you faced the member of the Awoken at the Monster Mash, the thing that you could do to make sure, at least for now, that this next domino is not knocked over is banish this mimic because you're pretty sure it's not a pair from this reality. Oh. It has a, an earthy smell to it that you remember from your time in Dungeon World. All right. I want to do that. I'll, I'll place my other hand on part of the hammer and try to banish it. All right. Roll use magic and take an additional point of armor defeating damage. Whew. That's going to knock me unstable. Okay. But that is an eight. All right. What is your effect and what is your glitch? My effect is to banish this thing from the, from the place it inhabits. And the glitch is that it has a problematic side effect. You feel the magic start to course through you and wrap around the mimic, and then it vanishes. And this pain racks through your body. And in this moment of knowingly hurting yourself over and over again to try and protect what you now know is a monster, something in your brain clicks and everything goes white. And you were standing in front of the Defender. It's good to see you, Jacob. It's good to see you, too. You've been busy gaining the favor of my brethren, and I am the last. Our pathway is open to you once more. There's something you seek from us. I'm ready to hear you out. I appreciate it. It's a bit of a big ask, but I'm, I'm glad it's being made to you, because I think of any of you, you're the one it's most likely to resonate with. There's a ritual we can do, one that's been performed before, to stop Nash and to stop death. Not its nature, not not just the progression of the life cycle, but this monstrous version. A volatile host. Yes. And we've assembled many of the players we need to do this ritual, but we need the powers of each of you, each of the gods. You know that long ago several of your members ceased to exist in your current form, and they've found a place among humans instead, vessels. And that might seem like a lesser state of being, but it's not, because there's nothing lesser about giving yourself over completely to something that matters, and something that you believe in, something that's important. That's what we need of all of you. We need you to let go, give yourselves over, choose mortal vessels, bond with a host, one less volatile than the one we're trying to stop, so that together all of us can perform this ritual and stop him for good. Few left believe in us in the form that we take. I have watched my deceased brothers and sisters do good work amongst humanity. Sometimes I fear far more than we are doing, those of us left to make the decisions ourselves. They will agree to this on two conditions. Name them. The first, they will each desire to meet the first host. I realize that after the first, what is left of us will pick the Vessel that seems worthy to it, but I know that they will each want to meet the first to take their essence. Of course. The second, the second is more for me than my kin. Lightning crackles in his eyes and down his hand and forms into a hammer. Be my defender again. It would be my genuine pleasure, and I will reach out and take it. And this energy washes over you. And the familiar armor of the Defender appears on your body, and you are back outside of the subterranean layer. The earth starts to rumble, and instantly it feels familiar. It is that same rumbling of a Draugr in the earth. As you feel this rumble, Jake, there is a flash of light from deeper inside of the subterranean layer, and... As you peer over your shoulder, you see Tass and Megan and Kim and Rev tumble through the portal in a heap of scrap. The Crit Show is a Crit Show Studios production, edited and produced by Brandon Wentz, with music by Jake Purley. You can find more information about us at thecritshowpodcast.com. To keep up to date with upcoming live shows, contests, and other special events, follow us at The Crit Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For even more weekly content, join us at patreon.com slash thecritshow.